Hello everyone. Today, I want to talk about your state of mind. You know, we spend a lot of our time trying to decide uh, the clothes we're going to wear. And, and maybe we even spend some time cleaning our house or making sure that our cars are maintained. Um, we spend a lot of time creating our task lists for the next day or ruminating about um, about the day that you just had, maybe reflecting on the day that you had. And so these aren't necessarily bad things, but the one part of our daily routine that oftentimes, get, oftentimes gets no attention is our state of mind. You know, if you're a Christian person, the Bible says, as you think, so are you. And you know, this isn't just a Christian axiom. This is something that the universe has put out there since the beginning of time, since you can find this same idea across a multitude of ancient sacred documents. Wherever your mind goes and whatever you think about, this is where you're going to push your energy. You're going to push your force of will, and you're going to begin creating and manifesting things in your life. And it all starts in your mind. But we don't we're not taught, and we don't spend enough time at all uh, realizing how we think, our mental processes. What is our state of mind? If you want a successful life, and you want a successful outcome, and you want to manifest happiness and joy in all the things that you want, first of all, you have to get your state of mind right. And if your state of mind is subject to the sensory inputs that you're getting, then your state of mind is always going to be controlled by some outside force. And if it's pain, then pain, pain will control your state of mind. If it's finances, which also is a kind of pain, which probably is for a lot of people at times, anything can cause you pain. Not just the, the baddies like physical pain or chronic pain or anxiety and depression. Craving something is a kind of pain because you don't have it. But how do you know all of these things from the outside are affecting you all the time? And if you don't spend time, because we're not taught, if you don't spend time cleaning up your mind, focusing your mind, then you won't have the happiness that you want to find in life. You won't manifest the things in life that you want. At the end of the day, we're, we're looking to find a way to walk a path um, that we're not sure about. We all look for guidance in some way, something that steers us. Because if you're not looking for that guidance, you're going to be guided. And you know, if it's your choice to sleep, then that's your choice. That's the choice you make. If you want to just be guided and 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 uh, pushed around into into you know from place to place, that's your choice. That's the choice that you're given. That's your free will to do to give up your right. But it all starts with the mind. As you think, that's where your energy goes. If you spend all of your time in the middle of the ocean of life being pushed from one side to the other, from wave to wave, then you are at the mercy of the sea. You are at the mercy of those sensory um, items that are, that are pushing up against you. How do you cultivate mindfulness? I've said it in nearly every, uh, every video that I've, that I've done here. Meditation is a way to do that. Meditation isn't necessarily the only way, but it absolutely is a way to do it. And you know, meditation, uh, when I grew up, I was taught meditation was Eastern religion and was very, very bad for you. Do not get involved in that. You're going to go to hell if you do. You're going to find your way into darkness if you do. And um, that is an unfortunate way to, to grow up with that kind of understanding because it's absolutely not true. I will tell you this, if we don't find a way to clean up our minds, if we don't find a way to give attention to our thinking in the same, with the same amount of fervor that we do when we clean the house, when we wash the car, 
when we create that task list for Monday morning, if we don't have our mental state as part of what we have to um, create in a positive way, then you're going to be controlled by everything around you. This isn't something that I'm making up. This is the reality. And if you'll reflect on it, you'll know and you'll realize. Here's a tip for mindfulness. It's very simple. Um, I've talked about using meditation apps. You can do that if you'd like. But here's a tip for mindfulness. Mindfulness means that you're living in the now space. Like you're a bubble living in the now. And the chaotic time of past and future is all around you. And you get caught up in that. And it's natural. It's natural for us to get caught up in that in the middle of our day. As we're in meetings, as we're dealing with, I don't know, whatever we're dealing with. It's not difficult to see that those things control us at times. It's when you're not mindful of your state of mind during those things that get you in trouble. And how does it get you in trouble? Well, what it does is it creates an emotion around it. You get emotional when you begin to look at, the, at your day, your schedule, uh, this creates an emotion in you. When you begin to see that some pain is coming back into your life, uh, or you start to feel anxiety, or, or maybe you're just overwhelmed. We are all overtasking ourselves, multitasking to the very edge of our ability to even survive. And this degrades our mental state. And we're not providing a lot of attention to our mental state. Your mental state is your key to success in life. It's your key to happiness and joy in your life. It is the absolute number one thing that you should be looking at is your mental state. And your mental state's not hard to figure out because it's connected to your emotions. And when you have that emotional reaction and you start feeling overwhelmed, or you start feeling sad, or you start feeling angry, you start feeling irritable. Sometimes you're irritable and you don't even know you're being irritable. Mindfulness allows you to stop and take a breath. Just take a breath. If you will take three breaths, as a matter of fact, in through the nose, out through the mouth, whenever you think about it, you will automatically be brought into now. And one to five minutes of that several times a day is going to improve your mental capacity. It's going to improve your thinking. It's going to improve your mindset and your state of mind. Here's a challenge for you this week. Every time you get a text message, use that interruption to be mindful. Take three breaths every time you get that notification message on your phone. So what's happening is something that's already going to happen in your life. The phone's going to do something. We live in a, in a society right now where the phone is, is around us and oftentimes that phone controls our life. In fact, it's how I'm recording this right now. But when that text message goes off, take that moment to take three breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth. Three breaths. And then relax your shoulders. Give your mind that mental break, that pause from your hectic and demanding day. You will benefit from it. And that tiny seed, that tiny seed of mindfulness will escalate and roll over into, into uh, you being able to really stay in a state that's good for your mind. And when your mind is healthy, when your mind is in a good state, you are in control of your happiness and your joy. Thanks for watching. And if you found a vibe with the message, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. You can also hit the bell if you want a little reminder when new content is posted. Think and be well today, my friend. And peace. Thank you.